starting. Hey! I was going to play theme song music today, but I decided not to. Why? Because I wasn't ready for it. Okay. Hi. Uh, yesterday, I, uh, I was working on a couple of different things. This is the two pieces of paper that uh, I drew these images on in the crayons made of pencils. The pencils made of crayon. Anyways, so, so I did these two uh, images here. And then I followed that up by sitting down and working on the uh, the next part of it, which was these fish that I painted yes during yesterday's live stream uh, during yesterday's live stream in watercolor. Yeah, it was watercolor. I'm pretty sure of it. I was there. I saw it. And uh, and so with these two different things, and the reason I had to use the two pages is to make sure I had the whole of the image on here. Um, because it's really just going with the moment, right? And so sometimes you got to account for your, your lack of planning. Anyway, so, um, so what I've done with these is that I put out a page this morning, which was this. Hey, let me get the uh, overhead banner. That's yesterday's banner anyways. Get out of here. I didn't change these. Oopsie daisy. So this is the panel that I did yesterday. Well, last night. Uh, from, let me get myself out of there too. I don't need to see that guy. Uh, so this is the panel that was done from the images that I just showed you. So is a rampant amount of fish jokes. I'm going to say that right now. I, I'm sorry, but it is. Um, yeah. So anyways, I think it worked out pretty successfully. And, uh, before I go any farther, I would like to take this opportunity to remind everybody that tonight, bingo, uh, tonight, uh, at nine o'clock, I am going to be doing a live stream with Jim Luan and, uh, if anybody wants to come on out and check that out, that would be super fantastic. Uh, he's a pretty impressive creator, and I'm really excited to sit down and chat with him. He's got uh, quite a things under his belt. He's been doing animation and film work for years. And so it's going to be an exciting chance for me to talk to somebody else that's, uh, you know, got a little bit of a crazy uh, output. <laughs> approach to to creating like you just keep at it just gun it gun it gun it and uh, i really really like that and i really like what he does so i'm really looking forward to it so a lot of realize there anyhow this is uh so this is yesterday's panel from our live stream and uh today uh yeah okay everything's set up so today we are going to uh sit down and do some some switching it up. We're going to do yesterday's, I kind of, I'm trying to find it. Yesterday's one page, I wrote, I've started typing things down in the computer so that I don't uh, lose the one page suggestions that I'm trying to keep up with. Um, and yesterday's was um, UFO drag racing, which is super keen. I'm really looking forward to that. I've got some ideas and I've got materials that you can see here I'm gathering up that I'm, I'm looking forward to using. So that's going to be kind of funky. You know, it's, it's one of those things where if you have an opportunity to try some rather unconventional things in, uh, in executing an idea, why not give it a try? There's a, uh, uh, let me think sequentially. Sequentially, there's uh, an artist named Dave McKeon. And what a lot of people don't... He did the covers for the Sandman books. And what a lot of people might not realize is that those early Sandman covers were... Did I cut out? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. So, yeah, so he's got these boxes full of items that uh, he has in these, the first issue and the second issue and the 
at, at least the first, second, and eighth book with these shelves. They're actual bookshelves that are in these pictures. So it's kind of interesting to think about, you know, when you when you look at it from a perspective of how much, how far can you go using unconventional things within your imagery. The trick for him is, of course, that he has to put together all these items and then take a photograph from up above in order to capture not just the mixed uh, media drawings or paintings that he might have um, surrounded by fake greenery or surrounded by um, this bookshelves full of skulls and whatnot. So it's an interesting idea that uh, the next uh, step along that way would have to be but have to be photographing it all so that you can utilize it as a flat image. And, you know, it's, uh, it's fun. I like that. Let's see. I'm going to just finish this and uh, we're going to get cooking. Okay. All right, so, uh, yeah, on to the next thing here. There's uh, some ideas that I have for doing this page, the uh, UFO drag racing page. And uh, there's some things that I want to try to do in order to, to put it together in a fun way. And so what I thought I would do is that I would start by by drawing on uh, something that's probably not entirely normal. So, and that's fine because that's, that's specific. There's that one more time, the, the announcement for tonight, just before I forget. Okay. Right. All right. On to it. So uh, the unconventional thing that I'm going to start with today for executing this page is uh, I don't know if you've ever done home renovation work or not, or if you've ever worked as a subcontractor on a construction site. This is uh, this is drywall tape, right? <laughs> Here we go. Hey there, drawer, not drawer. Drawer is one of those really challenging words. It's uh, you can find out who's really good at pronouncing things when uh, how er how early they could say the word drawer. I still can't say it. So hey, look out! There's Gary too. Hi guys. Welcome aboard. Okay, so um, so I've got some drywall tape here, and uh, we're going to put some fun little images on this and uh, and play with that notion to, to try to put together some of the stuff that I've been talking about, some of these, these little scenes and these little actions, and uh, I want to assemble it in a way, because this is something, well, specifically that... Uh, that other people that I know are doing some UFO stuff. I, I want to do something that's different from, from how they do it because I respect and appreciate what they're doing. So I uh, am going to be using my big old primary. I am absolutely, I don't know about anybody trying out ridiculous things, but this is a children's primary pencil from kindergarten. And uh, I'm loving drawing with it. So it's just something about the, it's, uh, I think it may well be, HB2B, something like that, but uh, it's just something about how it takes material, like how it uh, puts marks down and how it can uh, be utilized with a whole bunch of different materials that have, you know, already taken a little bit of abuse. So that's exciting. So this is this fun little thing that I'm enjoying drawing with. So, uh, okay, onto it. So the idea here is to, uh, to break this down similar to, well, that worked out pretty well. Um, similar to as if it's footage from a camera. So that's the notion anyhow. This has uh, got to be my favorite. I don't know if I've said this enough in these live streams, but uh, go to your local art supply store, Michael's or it's like wherever you are. And, uh, get one of these rulers because I've never seen such a good ruler for, you know, for naturally squaring everything off in the easiest way possible. 
It's got a million different marks on it. How, how, uh, how much easier could that be? Okay, so what do we got? I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff here. Andrew exclusively with bowling score pencils. <laughs> I draw. <laughs> I draw exclusively with bowling score pencils, says Jim. <laughs> I respect that. I, I have uh, gorilla mittens. I can't. Uh, it's it's like watching uh, a, a gorilla peel a, you know, peel a tiny banana. Watching me try to use one of those pencils. Anyway, so that's the stuff from yesterday. I'm going to throw it over here in the pile. So uh, the notion I have is to to draw these UFOs in different shots, and uh, and and to put them in correlation with. Uh, because I think it's fun to have a first person view account of how it's going to go. So let me, uh, rough this out because I got, you know, I had me a little old think and in my little old think, I thunk, I thunk to this. Um, so if, uh, I am going to look up the music, the musical notes for, um, from, uh, Close Encounter third kind and uh for the quavers and semi quavers that starts that dun 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 right so i'm going to put the musical signal there and then uh in embedded in with the title but uh instead of going bah, bah, just on its own Quote of the day, folks. Let's get some. That's when it gets a star. All right. We'll never see the day AI can recreate the mysterious quality of bowling score graphite. That's true. That's true. All right. Hey, Phil. Hi, Phil. Okay. So, so that's the idea for, with the title is to do it uh, in uh, along with. Uh, the uh, the racing lights and uh, so I have some ideas for that for the for the title anyway so that'll be the top quadrant of the page and then I'm going to take these strips of of uh, drywall and tape that. You these are maniacs. So, so it's just another paper to dry, and it's highly porous. So you can see all the perforations in it. Hopefully, maybe you can't I'll hold it up closer. There's lots of perforations in this stuff, so it's it's a little bit absurd to use, but that's okay. Um, the the idea is to draw the actions that are happening here as we're being informed of what they are from a the perspective of an F-16 as these uh these ufos are going to go whipping by so <laughs> oh my so there's the notion there is to, in order to move the eye along the page we want to follow our left to right axis diagonal down and then have it move back across the page in the same way so there's our course of of uh of scenes and then the closing scene of course would be here so whatever happens that overlaps these panels has to do so where it's not disrupting this this flow see by putting marks here and you show how it goes up there it's going to mess up the flow of the page so that is my thinky thinky so the idea of course being that it's just really starting off by drawing a whole bunch of goofball ufos right and then playing with with different materials and different marks in order to get these these suckers clearly defined. Uh, I'm playing in this one largely with uh, black and white. I say that, and Al, as is typical, there we go. I'll take that. There you go. Oh, nice flip Jan. That's what we're calling Phil now. Nice. So this is J Lou. Jim, you're not you're J Lou from now on. Gary's nickname is House Rules. I embrace my House Rules nickname. You guys are ruining Monopoly. <laughs> Excellent. 
the best thing in the whole world is the the countdown timer, the countdown bets that you can place on any Monopoly game played by kids on their own. It's almost like a countdown clock can start the moment that they start engaging with one another. And you can and your bets that you can place on which of the two of them yell, "So and so's cheating." I uh, we've uh, we've got a routine here in the house that uh, that my wife and I do that we 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 always uh, their kids are playing Monopoly, and then we try to guess which of our grandkids is going to go off first. So, all right, so um, I've got some directional movement implied with the UFOs that I'm, that I'm scribbling down and uh, trying to imply that the directional movement, of course, is this way. And, uh, and then the paper uh, that I'm working on is just going to be, because it's a cream color base, it's going to be fun because we can put white on it. We can, we can uh, do some, uh, some fun little things about, uh, masking it off and and we're going to flick some some ink on it this is uh it's gonna be fun kids we're gonna have a whole lot of fun today everybody so i want to uh i want to imply that uh there's an accident in the course of the race that uh that causes calamity so All right, so I'm just finding some shapes, throwing some stuff down, being as simple as I can for your standard uh, spacecraft. Let me be. Let me let me be careful here. Um, I'm not suggesting that UFOs are or are not real. Everybody's allowed to believe whatever they want to believe. It's going to be okay. We're all in it together. I say that because you'd be surprised what people believe. And, uh, and I, you know, passionately. And I've learned that uh, rather interestingly on a job that I was working on that uh, I didn't quite realize that, uh, that uh, it was taken more seriously than I think I, I was taking it, so. You know. It's uh, people believe in ghosts. That's all I'm going to say. People believe in ghosts. The ghosts are real. I got ghosts in my house. That's you got to be careful. That's why editors are scary. They'll say things like that. Uh, I have a ghost in my house, dude. Yes, you do. So, and those are the kind of people that are ruining Monopoly, Gary. Those are the people that are doing it. So, all right. So, uh, ships swerving and missing each other. Now, the idea, of course, in the background behind this image is that uh, I want to play with the notion of the aliens themselves inside their spaceship whipping around a little bit. So, so it's going to be one of these complex pages where I've got five different things happening at any given time. So, And that's part of the fun. I was uh, watching in preparation for tonight's uh for tonight's special guest at nine o'clock mr jim lua I, and jim will of course correct me tonight that i've been mispronouncing his name the entire time because uh you know names are tough uh hold on i missed something there. i'll get it in one sec i'll click on your um i was watching some of jim's uh animations and there's a moment in those animations where I think I saw one of the greatest things I've ever seen in an illustration. And I put it somewhere. I can't remember where I put my notes. Because I had to write it down because I forget crap all the time. It was, uh, I was watching Crumbler and the shot of the guy. There's a shot, if, and I suggest everybody goes on YouTube and watches the animation by Mr. Luan of, of the Crumbler, because there's a shot where a guy, the Crumbler, punches a dude, an uppercut, and knocks him into a garbage can, 
that I had to stop, rewind, and watch again because I was laughing out loud so hard. It was so well done and so completely 1980s roadhouse ridiculous. Yeah, buddy. So, yeah, it was great. Okay, what do we got? Uh, I saw a UFO once, then it flew over me and identified it as a plane. They're tricky like that. They are tricky like that. Okay, this is weird, but the comic strip I'm working on involves alien ships just like those. Oh my goodness. Luan. I'm, I'm at the point now where I get so many variations on my last name. I've just started signing my last name as it sounds phonetically. Because uh, I just figure at this point it's easy. And I don't think there's anybody else with my name making the comic. So I just decided to brand it and own it. So, yeah, I get it. I, I, uh, I'm glad I got it, though. I hate to be... Uh, you know, not uh, not saying your name correctly. So, all right. So this is again. I'm not gonna trying to get too overly detailed and overly creative here, because uh, I really want to uh, have some fun with uh, the the black and white marks in a second. Oh, what do we got? Hard crumbler. One, two Oscars. Nice. Nice. I'm um, still working on your comic challenge from last week. Aliens try to take over Earth but fail. Oh, yeah. That's the one with the grandkids. It's, uh, that was a really uh, fun process for me to do that with, uh, with the kids in the studio. Uh, because you get to see the sheer unencumbered approach that they have to to anything, any artistic approach, any any creative avenue, any any uh, opportunity to to explore storytelling, they're going to do it in the most over the top, kinetic and mental way possible to just expedite the process so much. And and you know, let's let's do a one page comic, and suddenly I've got nine pages of drawings from the kids, and the time that it took me to do too. So, man, that's fast. You know, don't get too uh, overconfident thinking that you're faster or anything because you there's kids are going to be faster. Oh, maniacs. Anyway, so, uh, okay, so here I've got the idea is uh, the ships are moving, the ships are veering with one another and then cutting each other off. And, of course, that's going to lead to calamity. So, and then I'm going to have a crash, a crash scene. So this is uh, just your standard pie plate spaceship. I, uh, I like the idea of... Uh, making this a little bit campy and a little bit uh, a little bit silly so so this is the panel where alien is going to uh, is going to be your your standard oh hell hold on I'm going to tilt that angle. How do you draw a space alien wearing a jet? I uh, see. I I'd considered drawing the the space alien in sort of like a, a, a Earth pilot getup, but is it really going to be recognizable as an alien that way? Why am I beeping? Oh, okay. So right now it kind of looks like Frankenberry. What do we got? Uh, there isn't too many people with my name combo and both get butchered in spelling and pronunciation. That's why I call everybody, hey dude, what's up guy? Because, you know, that's completely, uh, 
That's completely acceptable for us to do that to one another. If I ever see somebody at a public event and I touch them on the shoulder and go, hey, fella, that means I don't know their name. <laughs> Especially if it's a lady. That was not funny. All right, so I'm drawing a rebreather. And then uh, here's our, our little hands. Hey, let's put some greeble or grooble bits on the bottom. Let's, let's get some details on these fingies. It's very serious that we get their anatomy correct. Uh, today's music of choice is uh, it was Fishbone's rea The Reality of My Surroundings, but uh, now it's Prince and the Revolution. Around, or is, it, is it still a revolution in Around the World in 80 Days? Or around the World? I don't remember. I don't remember if it's, uh, if it's them or not. Or if he moved to the, uh, the, was it the Brother Love Generation? Tricky guy, that prince. Always switching it up, huh? Always switching it up. Recording in his bathroom. You never know where he's coming at. All right. All right. Not get too carried away with this. Uh, I want to throw one more in, though. See, there's a part of me that wanted to have one alien giving another one the beef. Yeah, that's not good enough. Um, giving the beef to another one out the window. Just because I thought that'd be funny. So now I got to remember how I drew this one. <laughs> it's easier to just make up your own. If you want to look at a, uh, understand the structure of a thing, the basic structure of something, but then draw your own. Uh, Scott Zirklin today put up a really cool, uh, another fun video. It's a video he's done before, but he put it up again because he's still got people asking him silly, silly questions about whether or not that, uh, what his thoughts are on is art school necessary for people to become professional artists. It's an interesting take. Give it a watch or -roo on uh, Cirquework, Cirquework Labs. Try and remember, do justice to, if anybody can remember Scott's, uh, Scott Cirklin's YouTube page, can you please put it up in the, in the chat or in the comments? Because, uh, yeah, my brain just turned to hamburger. So. But. Changing the angle here. Want to get that skinny neck in. Here's our hands and the, a hold of the controls. So we're just changing our angle. I've done three fingers on these guys. Uh, yeah, they have three fingers. Thank you. So. So in North America, one finger is telling somebody off. In Europe, I think it's two. On Antares, it's three. We know. We all know what that means.
I'm going to put the the handle here, and then I'm going to ink this this up in a second, and then uh, we'll make more uh, a little more sense out of it. So this is drawing the opposite ship as it flies by. And we see it through their windows because, yeah, UFOs have windows. And my world. You know what? I have got numerous elliptical tools beside me. And here I am trying to squig it together by hand like a goofball. Okay, doesn't matter. It's working. Put two pilots in each one. There we go. Yeah, that's a cockpit uh, I drew from memory uh, from the last time I was in one of these things. That's right. You don't just flick the eraser. Shoot the whole paper across the table. And then let's just get one more shot of uh, the ships racing. Oh, I got to keep this angle. So it's pretty, it's kind of repetitive, but that's okay. Let's try to have them uh, almost uniform in size. They're off. Okay, so there's our basic breakdown of our of our panels, and here's our collision moment. Uh, let's uh, let's draw this one as a sound effect, right? Not be too uh, overly concerned about that one. A oh, whammo! Well. It's uh, real language there, kids. Um, do I have? I'm just looking at random official recreations of f-16s you know okay well i got cool airplanes that i'm going to draw so uh but that's going to be over top of these so let's draw um this will be the so we're going to have this guy spiraling out in the background And then this one is slamming into the ground. And so a lot of this information is going to be a lot of messy, messy business. So when I'm drawing, when I'm looking at this and I'm scribbling this panel out, one of the things that I'm always trying to suggest to people is that while you're working, try to consider things like um, if a ship, I'm drawing this elliptical and then I've got this central elliptical, which I'm intimated that there's two guys inside, but this roof is a dome. So if this roof is a dome, you know, think of it in that context of all those, those, those lines for, for its shape, you know, and Think about how that moves around so that if you're going to have, and of course, this surface would be more like this. So if you're going to have the shape of the, sh the ship in your images and you're going to have something that hits here, it's going to bounce that way. Something that hits here is going to go that way. If something hits here, it's going to go that way just because, you know, that's how shapes work.
All right, so here's our here's our crash scene and our spiraling out of the second ship after his damage. So my debate right now at this point is to have. The one alien standing on the roof or not? What do we got? What's it say? Are you looking at what I'm drawing now? Like this is too uncanny. This is exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I'm sorry. I hope I'm not taking any thunder. I don't want to take your thunder. Um... It sounds really awkward, but uh, I'm just playing with the notion, and there's nothing to say that we all can't do the same uh, the same notion. So, and then we'll put some ripples in the in the ground here for the explosion. And then my intent is to have. The alien standing up here flipping off the other ones and I'm, yes I realize that how ridiculously silly I'm drawing that so and then we'll draw the second one coming up the hill still there we go. So now we've given a sense of scale. So uh, now it's all good. When I post this in a couple of days, you'll see what I mean. Nice. Looking forward to that, Phil. Okay, so there's our rough structure for our alien spaceship business that's going to be going in this uh, fashion across the page. Um, I think that it'll probably end up being like this and parallel lines so that it speaks as a singular narrative because if I try to put it like this then now the bottom panel uh, the sequence of uh, images is out of order so it's going to have to go like that across the page and so this is a sort of little you've come up with a conception in your head with something like this but the truth is is that you know it's going to end up having to go more in this fashion but that's okay because we're going to push the rest of it with uh, with the F-16s Okay, so I've got, I want to do some little silly bits. And uh, I don't know. there we go. Okay. I'm going to tape these down because I'm sick and tired of holding these already. Um, I was trying something fun today. I managed to figure out, because I like using tape as I'm working, I tend to... Well, let me use the white tape. White tape. Oh, white tape. It's hiding. I don't know where I put it. One sec. Well, I don't want to use green because I just did a piece of green tape. Anyways, what I figured out was that I can now, I scan tape. <laughs> it's just, I scan masking tape. And the reason that I scan masking tape is so that I can, uh, um, put it into uh, digital images now. So what I mean, mean by that is, I'll show you in a second with a page that I uh, did this morning. I was working on this morning. Now, uh, these are the couple of pages that, well, a couple, I've got eight pages that I've, I drew half the images for and then did nothing with. So um, this is what I'm trying to, to finish off in the, uh, 
in the computer. And so give me one second and I'll jump over to that. So, so the idea behind it is uh, this page here, fight shot, fight shot. Um, so in this image, in the panels that are on the left side, this is uh, drawn on a red piece of paper and I've used green masking tape in areas in order to um, just add a little bit of kick of texture, a little bit of modulation on the surface so that it lets me sit down and, and get a bit done on it without feeling like, oh, I'm going to wreck up this beautiful piece of paper where I've already marred it with the tape. So that sort of lets me be invested into it. I know it's a weird psychosomatic thing, but that's one of the ways that I approach stuff. Uh, so then when I took this panel on the right-hand side, now, if I take the background out, you can see that there's the red page drawings, and here's the drawing that I've just scribbled on digitally to add to it. And um, and I did that in a bunch of layers, and I put the I put the uh, the red base there to match the red of the the finished panels, but the tape is actually uh, not real. I scanned tape, and then I put the tape underneath the drawing as a lower layer. I've collapsed all my layers together now, but uh, but there's a lower it's a lower layer that has the tape on it underneath the layer that I drew on in order to emulate how I drew on the original pages. So I've, that's just my latest weirdness. So when I'm putting tape in on this guy, I'm going to leave it. So when I, when I finish doing what I'm about to do on this sucker, I'm going to take that tape off and uh, the, Oh, the overhang tape is going to go, but the tape that's inside the, the panels here, I'm leaving it. So just because I can. You can't tell me I can't. You're not my mom's. Anyways, so I thought that uh, that might be some fun. This is a Fodenosuke pen, and uh, I really enjoy these suckers. I think that they're uh, they're a lot of fun to use. They've got this beautiful weft. That's too high. They've got this beautiful weft to your line that you can get with these, and uh, I enjoy that a lot. So, these aren't uh, by any means perfect lines or whatever else, but, uh, you know, they're serviceable. All right. So, in typical me, I'm going to uh, play a little bit here, mixed media into the uh, into the image. Uh, what about, so I missed stuff. Okay, that's there. Am I looking for future one page suggestions? Always? Chuck Norris, fashion runaway god. I gotta write that, where's that post that I have? Chuck Norris. Fashion. Runway. God. 
Excellent. Yeah, that's on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun one. I like that a lot. Well, I have no choice in the matter. Chuck Norris says so. I did a drawing recently of uh, a one-page comic I did the last in the last year called uh, um, Kaiju Rock Paper Scissor, and uh, I have a one-page comic suggestion. Your Sam the Private Eye character meets the MIBs from DVSM, <laughs> but my Sam the Private Eye is ridiculous. Um, Sam the Private Eye is three one-page comics that just kept coming up with other ideas for Sam. Uh, they're three one-page one page comics of uh, playing off on the, the private eye trope from, from yesteryear. And uh, he's being interrogated by the cops, and they want to know what he knows about the case that they're all working on. And, uh, and they're you know, they're trying to ostensibly torture him for information, but what they're actually doing is feeding him yogurt. Meets Paul Pate. Nice. Um, so, you know, keep spooning that pudding, fellas. You know, and uh, and then there's another one where Sam is missing and she can't get a signal on the ground, the, the landline. And, and uh, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, no, I forgot the actor's name. Terrible. Classic 1930s, 1940s actor. On top of the world, ma, that guy. Um, he uh, he tries to hand her a cell phone, which uh, I love that. That doesn't make any contextual sense, but that's part of the fun. I love that sort of stuff. I love uh, playing off of uh, expectations. So. But Sam, <laughs> Sam the private eye. I, I'd be completely good with doing that. Sam the private eye. In this episode, I love doing that at the top of a page. In this episode, I'll have to, do I have a copy of one page nearby? Let me show, does anybody want to see Sam the private eye? Let me know. Let me know if those that haven't seen Sam the private eye want to see a Sam the private eye page. Sam the private eye meets the MIBs from DVSM 19. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun with that senior agent, like another senior agent adventure. And then we'll have to put Paul Payton there. Definitely got to put Paul Payton there. I think Paul Payton's got to be his own character. Anyhow. So I'm just throwing down some black line on this nonsense. And then, uh, but yeah, Gary, if you're being serious, I'm down with that. Okay, give me one second and I'll show you the, the same. I'm just gonna put these guys on their Sunday cruise. This is, uh, okay. Um, okay, I'm going to switch the camera here for a sec. Oh, excellent. I'm in. I'm in, Gary, 100%. Uh, one page printed. Sam. There's Here's the first Sam. Let me pull off the top banner here. So this one says, Sam the private eye. In this episode, even a jaded private dick has feelings. And so they all read like classic gumshoe. It was a typical day. It was hot and humid. My head was still ringing from last night. I tried working. I paced around, reviewing notes from my case. And then the phone rings. A call came in. Hey, Sam, you stink. Click. Now why would someone go and say a thing like that? Ridiculous. So that was the first one. 
And then uh, and then we kept going. I got more Sam's in this file. It's a lot of Sam the Private Eyes, folks. Trying to figure out where I get the rest of the files. Hey, there they are. Okay. Uh, that's Sam 1. There's... Why am I not seeing them? Probably because they're about the size of a, of a tick. There's Sam 2. Sam is, uh, in this episode, keep up with the times already. Oh, no. Sam doesn't answer. The line's dead. Whatever can I do? Pardon me, ma'am. I couldn't help but notice you're upset. Maybe this will help. It's a cellular phone. A what? <laughs> just, just dumb. And then the last one is uh, is the one that made my wife question if I was okay. Sam the Private Eye Part 3. In this episode, how to make a gumshoe spill his beans. You think he'll tell us what he knows, Captain? He'd better, McNamara. Sit down and take your medicine. Easy, Detective Foyle. Sam here wants to cooperate. He will if he knows what's good for him. You just keep spooning that pudding while I think. And if you notice, there's a little tiny pudding spoon and little cup of pudding there. Yep. Mm hmm Gold. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I don't know, folks. So, yeah, I would love to do the DVSM guys in that. So I'm down with that. That's fantastic. Uh, they've still got... All right, so there's there's our next one. So, yeah, these are coming in, and that's great. I really appreciate that, everybody jumping in and having fun with it. Uh, what have I missed? Oh, that's excellent. I'm so glad you're in. I'm, I'm down, Gary. I'm down with that for sure. Um, what is the painting behind me, the faces? Oh, the ones that my giant head is blocking? This is, uh, this is a picture of uh, two guys. I wrote it down, what they're saying. Because if I don't, again, if I don't write things down, <coughs> I, uh, it's, where's my note, my other notepad? Yeah, do you get a feeling that I might not be 100% organized today? All right. So the one guy is saying, uh, so it says in the word balloons, it's going to say, hey, Bob, you want to see my dance moves? And then he says, no, thanks, Lou. Not today. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. I was just painting. But looking at uh, Caravaggio stuff and looking at structure and value of light in, in the faces. But uh, I'd consider putting one more balloon right here where he says, no, thanks, Lou. Not today. I'm curious what that guy's doing. And then, of course, there's no other guy in the panel. Got to keep him wondering. So, yeah, so I've got, yeah, and I've got a uh, guitar, a uh, bass guitar over there, and uh, I've got drumsticks in with my paintbrushes. I'm a complicated guy in this here studio. I am fiddling, fiddling with 15,000 things at any given moment. Uh, I've got, uh, on Sunday, I was doing uh, miniatures with the, the kids. We're making a, a studio. A, a tiny miniature musical studio, music studio, and uh, uh, 35th scale, I think it is. And uh, we we're having fun building stuff out of that, pop machines and the like. So I'm always doing something. They call me Miss Jackson. I'm so crafty. No, no, that's nasty. Well, you know, it still works. Have I read Kent Morrow's? Uh, oh, hey. Thanks, guys. That's very nice. Yeah. Uh, have I read Ken Morrow's Caravaggio graphic novel? Yes, I have it on that shelf over there. It's uh, it's lovely. 
Uh, there's also a really a couple of really great ones on Windsor McKay, and there's uh, some cool ones on Vincent. Uh, and then they're uh, trying to think of who else I have. Uh, and then there's a bunch of uh, philosophers that that have been illustri illustrated by a number of people like Rick Geary. I, I love stuff like that. I've uh, I've got a couple of trade paperbacks called Action Philosophers, and it goes through the history of philosophic thought all the way up until um, about the 70s, 1970s. And uh, but and like it's told as though it's an, an an action film where people are racing through, through racing through the book. And yeah, I, I love stuff like that. That's 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 it. That's the that's my gym jam. All right, so Ken is a friend. Fantastic. The uh, tell him is, is uh, his his book is great. That's uh, it's it really is. I enjoyed it. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of cool when you get to know people that know people whose work you really enjoy. When I did my first book, I wrote inside the front page and with the publishing indicia, music was supplied by the following during the creation of this book. And I, ta I thanked a Canadian band called the Rio Statics from Toronto. And uh, what I didn't know is that... Uh, the publisher, my first publisher. Um, oh, you're in it. Oh, oh, hey now. What page? What panel? I'm going to look you up. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, what I didn't know was that my publisher uh, was childhood friends with uh, one, of the, one of the guys from the Rio Statics. And so he just gave a copy of my book to him. And then uh, he signed a second copy when they were out having a beer. And so I got a copy thanking me for thanking them. I thought, well, that's crunchy. And then uh, the next time they came to London, I got to uh, to meet them and go and see uh, and go see a performance by, uh, by the fella. And man, I got to tell you, that was super keen. My prints, uh, I'm listening to uh, prints on Spotify, and it has turned into hits of the 80s. And so I'm listening to Blue, you know, New Moon on Monday by Duran Duran, a band that named themselves after a Jane Fonda film, Barbarella. I remember when I was a teenager, I had a Duran Duran Seven and a Ragged Tiger poster on my wall in my room. Whew. 80s were tough. <laughs> All right, so there's the, the basics. Oops, one more.
All right, fun. Love Duran. Oh man, I think we've got the same taste, you guys. That's uh, yeah, I've got New Moon on Monday cranking in my ear right now. I, I like to have music playing when I'm working. I just, I just do. It's uh, it's always been comforting to me to to just sort of have that that through line of having tunage beside you kicking around in your head just tends to help me. There's the consistency to that near that keeps you from drifting off, I find. So that's tends to be why I listen to music as I'm doing stuff. Where is, who are you? Yeah, you'll do. All right, so I've got, uh, are you light fast? Water resistant. Okay, good. You gotta make sure of these things. Oh my goodness. The reason that I kept the 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 breaking down of the the image so loose and simplistic in its in its line was because I intended for it all to really come through. And uh, oh, now it's Little Red Corvette. Okay, this list isn't bad at all. That's kind of cool when uh, you put people you know in your books. I've got uh, a friend who's now passed away named Bob who uh, who had one eye because he had a uh, problem with his, his uh, veins that uh, they were sort of breaking down in his body. And so, unfortunately, it's causing his him to fall apart a little bit. Well, he was a, he was a fun guy. And uh, and real character in his face, and so I, in my Elmwood series that I did, Bob is a uh, plays a character called Mister Yin, and uh, he's a Sasquatch, or I'm sorry, a Yeti. He turns. Uh, he's the doorman of a of a of a building that uh, is completely full of uh, fantastic things. You know, you gotta have fun. <laughs> C run is the J Lou of the North. Yeah, buddy. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Just trying to play for a second. No, that's not gonna work either. Loading up in the old brush there, you know. It's getting a bit of the old things on her. Woohoo! Don't need more ink on that sucker. So, Jim, I'll send you the, the links to the. Uh, the streaming uh, a little bit later on. And we can, uh, if you've got uh, the trailer for your new project you want to post, that'd be cool too. So I've just got ink on this um, uh, toothbrush. This is a denture toothbrush. Spoiler alert. Not real. Um, so uh, I find that it works really good for, you get a lot of really fine line from it. 
because the bristles are, are far are harder than traditional uh, toothbrush bristles. And so I tend to like uh, really uh, using this when it comes to, you know, flicking, flicking ink or flicking, uh, doing some spatter work with that. So. All right, I'm just going to leave that soak in there. Uh, and then I'm going to try to remember where I just put the brush I was using. So, um, things like so the, the things like different kinds of paper, like if you're using, uh, I'm going to do something tomorrow with uh, watercolor paper. Just purse guys, and uh, different paper, and it's different fastness uh, for for the materials that you're using, and it's different uh, surface textures that they have. They give us so much to work with. That's why I can never quite, you know, stay away from trying different things all the time. All right. Where are we at? <laughs> Night, Chris, and J Moon. Nice. Yeah, same here. Same here. And anybody, uh, once again, if I can remind people, I will remind you until my lips fall off, folks. It's uh it's a, a real treat to uh when I get the opportunity. It was really fun to have uh have Gary on uh during one of the streams and it's gonna be really fun to have uh to have Jim on board. It's I've got a lot of a lot of deep probing questions. I think we came up with some pretty good ones yesterday. Like why? And uh what did you do? Those are my two favorites so far. So this is just uh, ink that I'm using here and uh, throwing in little textures and little bits to little, is that in? That's not even in, sorry. Little textures and little bits and bobs to give some form to uh, to our alien pilot here. I keep my water way over there for a reason. It's twofold. One, um, because that's this my my tray setup is over here because I paint on this wall. And also because I have got way too much around me, including you know my PC and etc that I don't want to spill water over here. And uh, yeah, I've spilled water. I've been known to spill a water or two. I've also been known to drink uh, my paint water. So it's, uh, and I wish I could say that that was a rarity. It's not. I have drank paint water, I don't know how many times in the course of, uh, my days. So I'm just throwing down these heavy blacks in behind him here. There's a fantastic grain that runs through this paper, which is why I pulled it out of my drawer of different papers to use. Uh, because I like that. Uh, I like that grain in there. And uh, I like that 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 line is a fold line is what it is for where you you crease the paper and then you put it as a corner bead 
when you're doing your drywall. I don't know if anybody here has done drywalling or not, but so when I built uh, the second floor here of our house, I had a fair amount of drywalling to do and not really knowing how much drywall tape I would need, I bought an entire extra roll. So until somebody says, hey, uh, you got any extra uh, drywall tape? I'm, uh, I'm using it with whatever the hell I want to. So, okay. So, see that? It just jumped out of my ear. Fleetwood Mac came on and my headphones said, no! You do not need to be sidetracked with the mysterious allure of Christine McVie's voice. But you thought I was going to say Stevie Nicks. Well, you were wrong. So these are little fun bits, and then I'm going to come in in a second with the white and uh, and play with these a little bit more. This is uh, yeah. So this is this is fun. The other piece that I'm going to be putting into uh, this page is going to be, and I'll have uh, I'll have it finished for uh, for tonight. Is uh, is the F16? Uh, a couple of shots of that. There are a couple different perspectives on it so that uh, it's a grounding thing for our narrative uh, as much as these aliens are doing their thing and carrying on. Uh, I think that uh, an accountable first person narrative that we can more readily connect with vis-a-vis uh, -vis a person is, uh, is handy. What do we got? Uh, oddball request. Perhaps when you do the Chuck Norris piece, would you do collage mix with your art style? Like from fashion magazines. Do I have to go out and buy fashion magazines? If I don't have to go out and buy fashion magazines, but yeah, I'll incorporate, uh, I'll incorporate some of that sort of Fandango in there for sure. I'll try anything. I might end up. Yeah, I, I got an idea. I got an idea. Uh, so here's where my brain just went with that. Uh, I, what I'll do is I'll photostat some of those out. Yep, that's what I said. And uh, and then I got some plans to do some stuff with those. That's yeah, that's gonna be fun. Thanks, sir. That's a fun suggestion. And people say, do it this way. I tend to go, no, I'm going to do it my own way and do the opposite. But I like that suggestion. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it, to do it, to do it, to do it. All right. Is that everything? Yeah. Okay. One last little thing to do. Whoops, I still got that up. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. That sounds like fun. See, the fun request, folks, that's the way to do it. I want you to draw it this way, and I have this guy doing this thing in this panel, and I usually respond with, it sounds to me like you want to draw it. Good. Inside. You don't drink, don't smoke. Out of mint. So this is the ink that was uh, on the... Just picking up all the ink from... The eyedropper. Okay, good. Nobody knows. 
Boy, my teeth are going to be black after that, huh? All right. Uh, grease pencil. I gotta go get another one of these. This guy's getting small. It's fun the different things that you can you can find with completely random things cut together. It's uh, oh yeah yeah that that was my that was uh, an idea for sure, but uh, there's something that I can do if I actually uh, print out a few things so. Yeah, so I don't know if, whoops, I'm sorry, that's completely out of panel. So grease pencil's great because grease pencil will, it will get in there at pretty much most papers and, uh, and allow you to put that mark right over top of whatever materials that you've got down. And it doesn't pick up, right? So it's... Uh, it's kind of nice in that regard that it, it allows you the availability to to really experiment and pursue some marks and and some some interplay on your on a piece that you might not have initially considered. It kind of works out like a like a magic eraser. It lets you just go over whatever, including tape. We, the public, trust you. <laughs> I'm the I'm this generation's David Crusoe. I get to do this now. Well, okay. I made the wrong David Crusoe. Anyways. All right, so uh, so I'm coming in here now with a white gesso. White gesso is one of those things where it's going to work completely different in different uh, surfaces, and and uh, that's that's kind of fun. But because this is not. Uh, a typical surface it, it's it's going to do its trick here and give us some some nice flattening white to the backgrounds and i kind of like that so and i like playing with uh, the texture of putting it down in, in a sort of impasto i like having the the some brush strokes in there. I, I don't mind those at all. In fact, I think it gives it uh, a kind of little body, a little bit of something extra by doing that. So, you know, it's, it's all about trying anything for me and uh, finding interesting things that come out of those those experiments and seeing what uh, what that picks up for you. I don't know if you've ever looked at a Drew Struzan painting. Uh, I don't know how he does uh, this wonderful sort of, it's like these sweeping lines uh, that go around the piece, unless he's doing it just like this, letting them dry and then drawing over those. And uh, I don't know if it's a specific medium that he uses on that or not. Please don't tell me if you know, because it's one of those things that I've wondered for years, but haven't really looked into on purpose. Because part of that, and that's the beautiful thing about original work, is that uh, 
I think the AI will never understand some of that, some of that monkeying around of surface and some of that application stuff that uh, we're not going to see any other way other than it being done in a traditional sense. There's only so much that you can do, I think, in computer art programs that you're not going to get some of those textures and opportunities that you're going to be afforded by working traditionally. So I'm doing the same sort of thing over here. And this is why I have parchment paper down below my working surface is because it allows me to be messy. I ideally should have masked off each of these panels, but let's be honest, I'm too much of a spazzy worker, too fast paced to, to be bothered with, you know, doing that and then dry time and all that other jazz. So we're just doing panel to panel to panel to panel to panel. And that's how it's going to be. And so this is just... Uh, the background guys basically uh, to the principal I know it's the principal suggestion for the story but uh, the real fun angle that at least fun for me that that I'm approaching this with is uh, is with the commentators and is with uh, uh, two things it's the commentators and I'm going to be translating this page is going to be written in two languages. One is uh, human, Earth, uh, English, and then the other is uh, is a uh, alien. Just because uh, I thought that'd be fun. And it's a graphic implement that we can put in place that gives just a little more texture and body to our page. In fact, I might have so much fun doing this, it could be a two-page piece. I say one page, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I feel hard and fast with the rules that I have to keep it to just one. Like the thing with the grandkids, um, Earth versus Mars, or the gigantic elaborate title that the kids think it is. Um, that's a six-page thing. And uh, it just... It's just kept going, you know, and why, why deny that? Why, why hold back on that at all? So it's a six page thing. I did a piece for a little girl, a little girl suggested I do a story and it's at the back of one page comic extravaganza volume one. It's uh, I did a wait till your um, father knows best type sitcom of, uh, Nice zombies. She wanted a story with nice zombies because her dad really likes Walking Dead. So she wanted nice zombies. And so I did Father's Knows Best as zombies. And they order uh, Dad's reading his paper. And then the, the pizza delivery kid knocks on the door. And uh, Mother goes to answer it. Her father goes to answer it. And it turns out it's the kids come down the stairs, all the sort of tropes of the 1950s television. And uh, and so I try to fit all of that into, I still got that up, sorry. Um, I try to fit all of that into this this page. It ended up being a, uh, a five page uh, short story. So you gotta take those moments. That's uh, part of the fun. Yeah, so like I said with the tape here, I'll, I'll literally leave that tape in the in the page, in the panels, uh, because it, that's the secret sauce that kicks up as we're working, is that the tape, uh, the blue tape that is now incorporated into my images is, uh, is made me just decide that a sort of binding color so that this page isn't just black and white, 
the a lot of the text and things are going to be put in in the blue just to match the tape and uh and that's sort of that's the sort of things that happen along the way the fun happy the happy accidents as bob ross puts it that uh allows us development that we might not have considered before and we're going to go with those All right. What have I got? And just like I said before, I'm throwing some textures in those just for scuzz. One th an hour 30. I'll keep going for a few more minutes. Let's just finish these suckers off. And then uh, I'll do some F16 drawing and start putting this together. So this will be up for tomorrow. And then tomorrow we got a suggestion already of uh, Chris Walken ordering a beer, drinking it down. This mouth hole. So I'm now using the same lid with white ink as opposed to the black ink that I put down earlier and uh, put, putting a little bit of spatter here and there just to give our images a little more, a little more texture, a little more depth. Sorry, that's uh, off the panel there. But uh, it just sort of lets us Just lets us get a little bit more something in here. And then there's going to be one last bit of business I'm going to put in here. And that is uh, some graphite. Now, I haven't really got too involved in painting the explosion here. And that's... Uh, I think I'm gonna play with that a little bit in the uh, in the Photoshopy. Which is why I haven't put Waymo in either. And then so I'm taking the white and I'm brushing it over the crudely drawn spaceships. And uh, I'll come back to him. And the reason that I'm doing that is it's, it diffuses that that black, crisp black line. So as the white dries, it diminishes that line. Because things are in focus as they're moving by at whatever speeds. So yeah, I'm really, really appreciating all of the ideas that are coming through for, uh, for the one page guys. Keep at it. That's, that's fantastic. 
um, do what I can to, to try to get these pieces done. And as we're going here, I hope people are having fun with, uh, with how we're going about it. But yeah, if there's any requests for, I don't know if there's a, something you want me to give a crack at, see what we can explore and find out with, uh, different materials. Yeah, I'm down. I'm always down for stuff like that. I, uh, I appreciate any avenue for exploring mark making and, uh, and trying different uh, approaches to storytelling. So, yeah, I'm I'm pleased with how these panels are coming together. I uh, I'm gonna hold this up for a second so that maybe it'll pick up some more of these textures. Now, oh, unfortunately, the camera is a crap angle, but you can see a lot of that sort of friscolation that goes on in there, all that little spattering, um, and that for me is. Uh, a lot of fun you know I uh, I really enjoy stuff like that when it comes through I'm gonna use my hair dryer for a second just one hot second and then uh, I'm gonna throw in some graphite again on this sucker so yeah we've got four one-page suggestions lined up and uh, in addition to that anybody that has uh, tuned in or is watching this you know after it's it's uh, over and if it's not uh, if it's still January 31st please tune in at nine o'clock tonight Nine o'clock tonight, I will be joined by the wonderfully impressionable Mr. J. Lou, Jim Lou on. Okay, so now I'm just putting some, some schmutz and some marks and some just some fun business in each of these panels to try to suggest some some degree of movement from the the spaceships and give a little bit more body to them you know it's 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 just about playing it's just about having fun at the end of the day there's a whole bunch of different things that you can experiment and try along the way and then after enough of that has happened over time you're going to find that it's a lot of it just starts to become sort of a second nature. And uh, that's a gift. Yeah. I haven't heard the song Mr. Roboto in a long time. And it's playing right now in this song list that I'm listening to. And I got to tell you, I uh, I forgot how silly this song is. I thought it was so cool when I was younger. It was the video. The video was practically a film for this, for Mr. Roboto. And who doesn't like a revolution narrative? And then the last thing I'm going to do is uh, some come in with some white ink from the pen and put in the, all of the highlights and textures and business that uh, are going to give uh, some variation to to the uh, to the panels and to the image and really make some good contrasting because at the end of the moment you know you really want that 
that contrast, that definable separation from your, your darks and your lights. That's fun. Now I put uh, in stream of conceitedness that I just worked on this year. I had uh, these UFOs in there fighting a giant robot. So if you skim back through my Instagram for a while, it's in the blue pages, the predominantly uh, blue ballpoint pen story it's uh some guys are in a movie a jazz club watching an old film being projected and uh and arguing over where they're going to go for dinner as one guy talks to the whole film and then the, what's happening in the film is a character who looks like me hence it being conceitedness uh is trying to you know escape from absolute calamity in this 1950s style film with giant robots ufos fighting in the streets monsters etc all right so this is uh So here's the crash. Here's the smashing together of the ships. Uh, what have we got? Hey, sorry, I've been watching, but I had a couple of back-to-back -back calls. Well, what we talked about was the secret of the universe. And uh, then we calculated pi to 267 uh, points. Just talking about plan. Nine o'clock tonight. Mark it down on your calendars, folks. I never keep track of who's how many people are here. If it in the corner of my eye, if it moves because there's dialogue happening, that's the only thing that I kind of follow. For all I know, there's nobody here at any given moment when I'm jibber jabbering away. And uh, that's fine. So this is a kind of a fun way of, of going about it. And, you know, just just sort of restraining yourself to a couple of different medium and, and, and uh, having a go. It sort of lets, uh, lets you explore and have fun. Graphite's kind of fun because it, it has a nice softness to it, and the tooth of the paper really lets you uh, just be sloppy and silly with your marks, and, and it just uh, just lets you go. So, yeah, I don't know. I can uh, start mailing uh, little bits of drywall tape to people if they'd like some. Try it out. 
Ah, oh, the calamity. Did you hear how many things just fell off my desk? Yeah, here. All right, so let's see how well. If you're buying jelly roll pens, don't jump by the zero fives. Everything above that. Zero fives are next to damn near pointless. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm falling off the... Yeah, that's not doing it either. I hope that's not my signal dropping out. And if it is, I apologize. Yeah, that's fun. Is it going to work properly, though? So what I'm doing is I'm clumping up a bunch of white paint right here and then just dragging it off. For our collision. So there's our collision panel, and here's our crash panel. Just gonna hit a couple more whites in there. All right, and then there's our landscape. There's our explosion in the landscape. Oops, that's not in camera, I'm sorry. So here's the explosion that we're putting in as the second ship goes down. And old Johnson Magoo here is flipping on the bird from his crashed ship. It's all about the dialogue, I think, with something like this because it just seems so, you know, as the ships are whizzing around each other. If I can have the dialogue say, oh, that was a close miss there, Jim. Oh, I sure saw that there myself there. Oh, boy, oh, boy, Bill, it looks like these two are going all out. Of course, it's going to be, well, yeah, 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 yeah,
you know, and then uh, translate it to the English, but. Woohoo! I think I'm going to need a heavy body acryl acrylic for some of the white highlights. The paper that I'm, the drywall paper is highly absor uh, absorbent, so, which is a good thing if you're using it for drywalling, but it's not a great thing when you're using it for, for drawing, so. Yeah, it's not letting me do anything in, the, in there. So I'm going to have to switch to a heavy body acrylic, I think. Any here. So, uh, yeah, so we've got a good structure for these uh, these panels. I'm feeling good about uh, how they're coming together. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes next. I'm going to let this dry. And then uh, give it a little bit of tooth to it, I think, with uh, heavy body white and uh, and maybe a little bit of ballpoint just to give it a little bit of texture. And uh, and then the other thing that I'm going to draw is, uh, like I showed you in the in the rough note, there's going to be F16s in here. Is this in camera? Hmm. I'm going to have some some F16s flying through. You know. In, in the while these ships are racing and commenting on on the fact that the ships are as fast as they are and they've got no chance to catch up to them so uh, and at, so and then the third aspect of it is to incorporate the the race part of it and some of the race motif from uh, from the drag strip so there's I got a bit ahead of me to, I'm sorry I moved off camera again I got a bit ahead of me to put together. But uh, but it's going to be fun when I, once I do because uh, those elements as they tie in together the I, the whole point I'm trying to get across here is movement and and action so hopefully that's all going to work up but it's uh, ten to two I uh, or ten to yeah ten to two for me no to, uh, ten minutes to two hours for me I'm sorry good heavens and. Uh, I've got a couple things I need to get done. And, but tonight, 9 o'clock, I'm going to put the, uh, the promo up for it one more time. It's uh, right here. Oh, no, 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 that's Dave. So this is uh, this is tonight, 9 o'clock. I'm uh, really looking forward to, uh, to Jim coming out, and, and we're going to talk some art. So tune in here at the, at the live stream. Uh, and and come and join us, and and we're gonna we're gonna talk some stuff. So feel free to to get involved in that, engage, and uh, looking forward to that. But uh, I'll be posting this page up there then. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's nice. It's 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 really nice to be able to 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 look forward to these interactions that you know I I feel very fortunate to be able to have with. Uh, with all kinds of other creators and, and, and people following uh, here. If you do have a one page comic suggestion, feel free to put it in the comments uh, on the, the YouTube video that's in my live stream, uh, as well as, uh, you know, in the feed while we're, while we're uh, in, uh, in camera at live. And we'll get a crack at it. We'll get a look at it. And, uh, you know, I pile up X amount of these and do them as I can. I try to do them in order, but uh, that's not always a guarantee. And, uh, yeah, so if you can make it out tonight, please do. Really looking forward to that. And uh, very, very much. And uh, really looking forward to uh, a bunch of different engagement. And I think uh, we're going to have uh, a really good time. And it's very rare that I get a chance to come and do a nighttime, a nighttime uh, talk. So... So yeah, this, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to sign off for now.
Uh, thanks very much for hanging out. Uh, this has been a fun one to, that I'm working on here, and uh, but I've got a whole bunch more uh, little aspects of it. I'm going to put together those F-16s, and you'll see those tonight uh, as I'm uh, as I'll post this. Uh, well, I'll post it for tomorrow's two o'clock because uh, I'm going to post up something uh, promoting uh, tonight's uh, live stream with Jim. So. Uh, pay attention for that, and uh, otherwise I'll see you here tomorrow at 2 o'clock EST, um, 12 o'clock MST, and, uh, and 11 o'clock uh, PST. Of, of course, I I'm hoping that I'm going to see you all tonight at uh, 9 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and 6 o'clock. So, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, thanks very much for hanging out. Uh, keep creating. Looking forward to seeing what you're doing. Please, uh, Feel free to share. Uh, I'm always down with that. And uh, I'm always about interaction. So bye for now. Thanks very much, guys. See you later.